Amen. So if you have a Bible tonight, we'd like to turn with us to Job chapter uh, 23. Amen. Job chapter 23. Going to read one verse, verse number 6, and uh, then have a word of prayer. And I believe that once I read it, you'll kind of see the direction I'm heading in. Amen. The Bible said in verse number 6, Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. Heavenly Father, most righteous God, Lord, as we come once again tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that name that's above every name, God, I thank you for the privilege, amen, to be back in the house of God one more time, Lord. And I realize tonight, amen, without the anointing of God, God, we can't do anything. Uh, but, Lord, I pray tonight, God, would you help us, amen, to preach this uh, the way that you put it in our heart, knowing that, amen, it takes the anointing to make preaching effective. And, God, I thank you and I praise you and I give you the glory for it all right now. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I, as I said a moment ago, I feel like a lot of folks, I, amen, they've got the wrong conception or amen, or maybe they have a misconception, I, amen, whenever it comes to the things of God. And I, I, I know that whenever you read certain things, I, I, you know, there are scriptures that will just jump right out at you. I, I, but when I read this, I, I, amen, it really got a hold of my attention where it said, will he plead against me ha, ha, with his great power and then he answered no but he would put strength ha, ha, in me and amen I'm glad for that tonight that we serve a God ha, ha, that whenever it seems like that the bottom has fell out of everything ha, ha, amen that he is able to rise us up ha, ha, amen to give us strength to be able to go on another mile ha, ha, for the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 ha, ha, that God is is faithful who will not suffer you ha, ha, to be tempted above that which you're able ha, ha, but with the temptation make a way of escape that you might be able to bear it ha, ha, amen so God ha, ha, wants to put strength in you and I today ha, ha, so we can have amen what we need to be able to get up ha, ha, and to go on ha, ha, one of the first instances amen that I saw this ha, ha, of course was in 1 Kings chapter 19 ha, Amen. A very relevant text, I believe. I, I mention it quite often. How that Elijah, I, I, the man of God that he was, had, I, I had such a victory in chapter 18 I, I, up on Mount Carmel. But when Jezebel threatened him, I, I, amen, and he saw that, he got a little discouraged. I, and one of the reasons why I feel like that it's so relevant, I, I, because I dare say that all of us I, I, at some point have been in that same ha, ha, situation to where we got a little discouraged ha, and we sit down and we thought that's it. Ha, ha, hey, man, I'm ready to die. God, this, let me go home. Hey man, let me, ha, ha, you know, escape this mess. Ha, ha, but I'm glad that God was so mindful of him ha, ha, that he sent an angel, not just once, ha, ha, but twice there in chapter 19, ha, ha, to make him a cake and a cruise of water to strengthen him. Ha, hey man, and that same God ha, ha, that helped him there ha, ha, is the same God that we serve tonight. Ha, ha, the Bible said Jesus Christ, ha, ha, the same yesterday, ha, ha, today and forever. Ha, ha, so you don't have to sit there ha, and just let your battery run down. Ha, ha, amen. And feel like I just can't go on any further. Ha, ha, but we serve a God tonight ha, ha, that is able to put strength in us. Ha, ha, amen. In many different ways. Ha, ha, one of them is by the word of God. Ha, ha, the Bible said so that faith cometh by hearing. Ha, ha, and hearing by the word ha, and friend when we hear the word of God ha, ha, in order to cause us to want to come alive ha, ha, amen and realize that ha, ha, greater is he who is within us ha, ha, than he that is in the world ha, ha, the world wants to drain us and bombard us ha, ha, but God wants to reach us up ha, ha, for he said in Isaiah 40 and 31 I pay that wait upon the Lord I shall 
shall renew their strength. Uh, uh, amen. Friend, there's a renewal that can come uh, uh, when we come into the house of God. Uh, uh, but we've got to come hungry. Uh, amen. And thirsty after righteousness. Uh, uh, for he said, Blessed are they that do hunger uh, uh, and thirst after righteousness. Uh, uh, for they shall be filled. But amen, seems like that some of us, ha, amen, we lose our appetite for the things of God. Ha, amen, you know, folks, they think, well, I can, you know, do with it or I can do without it. Ha, ha, but somewhere, no matter how strong you are, ha, ha, there's going to come a time that ha, ha, you're going to reach the apex of what you can handle. Ha, and you're going to need help that can only come from above. Ha, ha, that's why David said in Psalm 121, ha, I lift mine eyes unto the heels. How from whence cometh my help? How my help cometh from the Lord? Ha. Amen. And you don't have to look very far sometimes ha. Ha. to see the need, amen, of being recharged. Ha. Ha. You know, we carry these phones and ha. Ha. you know, there's some folks that are of that uh, mindset. Ha. Ha. Whenever they get just a little low, they're looking to plug them in. Ha. Ha. I get them topped off and peeled back up. Ha. And then they're like my son. Ha. 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 Amen. And his could be at 3% and he'd say, I'm good. Ha. Ha. Amen. I've got a plenty. Amen. Don't need to plug in just yet. Ha. Ha. You know, but that mindset carries over into the church sometimes. Ha. Amen. And we ought to be so hungry for God ha. and for God's word that every time that we come, ha. Ha. we would be grasping to get a hold of what he's saying. Ha. Ha. To help us to get a little stronger. Ha. Ha. To go right back out and face that enemy. Ha. Amen. And know that we've been given the victory ha, ha, through and by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You can find not only there, ha, ha, but amen. I thought here in the book of Job, ha, amen. Job, ha, ha, was a man that, amen, he had experienced a trial that had been ongoing for some time, ha, and you would have thought when his friends showed up, ha, ha, that they would have been the Calvary, that they would have been the people that would have edified and encouraged, ha, ha, but you know what he said? He said there in chapter 13, ha, ha, you're forgers of lies and physicians of no value. Ha, ha, instead of picking him up, ha, ha, they had accused and they had pushed him down. Ha, ha, but I'm glad that God ha, ha, gave Job something to hang on to. Ha, and in chapter 14 of the book of Job, ha, ha, you know, it didn't get really theologically deep, but he said, I know my Redeemer liveth. Ha, in other words, I may not understand what's going on around me, ha, ha, but I do know one thing. I know God's still God. Ha, and in this world that we're living in tonight, ha, how the enemy would like to throw that question of why ha, ha, at us to try to get us to back up ha, or to drain that spiritual zeal right out of us. Ha, ha, amen. Ha, ha, but friend, I'm glad that we can hang on to the fact ha, ha, that God is still in control. Amen. I went in for a revival one time. Ha. Amen. A friend of mine's church. And, ha. Ha. you know, I, I was excited just to be there. And I come through the back door. And, ha. Ha. you know, they were talking about the weather and different things. And I just ran back and squalled, Glory! And the pastor jumped and he said, you done scared the revival out of me. Hey, man, you know, I mean, he, he got kind of jumpy. Ha. But I think it's sad that we've come to the place that we expect it to be quiet ha. and to be tame ha. Ha. and to be, you know, subdued. Ha. Ha. Friend, we ought to come in here to get recharged. Ha. Amen. And fired up and pumped up ha. Ha. because we're fighting a real enemy. Ha. Ha. The Bible said to be sober, ha. Ha. to be vigilant for your adversary that devil walketh about us a roaring lion ha, ha, seeking whom he may devour. Ha. In other words, we shouldn't take that for granted. Ha, ha, we shouldn't think, well, you know, I've got enough. Ha, ha, amen. But we ought to get more than enough. Ha, ha, we ought to be like when Jesus took those five loaves and two fish ha, and he blessed them. They was ha, ha, several baskets full of the fragments that was left over. Ha, and I'm glad that God can do that in our life. Ha, ha, so we'll have something to 
share. I, I, when we go out there to the Walmart or I, I, to the grocery store, we can I, I let our light shine. I, I, amen. Somebody said, how are you, brother? I, I, well, I, I'm about dead. You know, I'm barely getting by. I, I, boy, that's a powerful testimony, ain't it? I, I, no, sir, we ought to say, man, I'm blessed and highly favored. I, I've got Jesus in my heart and I, I thank God as bad as it may be right now, this is not all there is. I, I, for Jesus himself said, behold, I, I go away to prepare a place for you. I, and if I go away, I'll come again. I, and I'll receive you unto myself that where I am there, you might be also. I, I, so I believe tonight with all of my heart I, I, that God wants to put strength in us. But see, Elijah's problem was he was so weary from the journey. I, I, amen. That the angel had to wake him up and say, Arise and eat, Elijah. I, I, for the journey is too far. Have you ever I, I had one of those spells of being tired? I, I don't worry. It was hard to get motivated. It was hard to eat your breakfast. It was hard I, I, to get your work done. I, I will sometimes this old flesh is weak. I, I, the Bible said the spirit is willing, I, I, but the flesh is weak. But I'm glad that God I, I didn't abandon him I, I, but he sent that angel a second time I, I, amen to get him to eat because God wanted him to have enough to make it I, and I'm persuaded that as long as we're in this world I, I, God is going to make sure that we have what we need I, I, for David said I was young and now I'm old I, and I ain't never seen the righteous forsaken I, or his seed big and bread I, I, but you know we train ourselves I, I, from the time that we're really young, I, I'm thinking, well, if this doesn't happen, I, I'm going to die. I, I, from the first time, I, I, something doesn't work out your way, you find out real quick you didn't die. I, I, you survived. I, I, amen. God has got a plan for your life. Amen. I told him, I said, you know, I was preaching this morning about Joseph. I, and I said, could you imagine his coat was taken away, but God still had a plan? I, I, he sold in slavery, amen. I, I looked like the dream that he had was going to die, but he held on to that. I, and God saw him from the prison to the palace. I, I, the enemy would love to kill our dreams tonight and say, well, I, I, this is as good as it gets. I, I, but amen, I dare to disagree because I, I believe the Bible said that I has not seen, I, I ear has not heard neither, I, I has it entered into the heart of man all of the good things I, I, that God has prepared for them I, I, that love him. If we love him tonight I, and we come into his presence, I, I friend, we ought to be able to find the strength to say, you know what? I, I feel a little stronger. I, I feel like we can make it. I feel like we're going to be all right. I, I, why? Because if God before us, I, I, who then can be against us? I, I, amen. Somebody said, but look at all the things that are against us. Doesn't matter. I, I, amen. Really, I have God on my side. I, and as long as God is on our side, it's going to be okay. Amen. 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 But even in the book of Daniel, I, I, we find Daniel, amen, had a desire to know what was going on and to understand the visions I, I, and the dreams that he was having. I, and amen, he got weak at a point or two. I, I, amen, and there was no strength remained in him. I, and sometimes you may find yourself in a spiritual battle. I, I, amen, and you feel like, I just don't have the strength to stand anymore. I, I, well, you know what God did? God sent an angel angel from heaven. I, I touched him and raised him up. I, and God can not only bless us through the word, but God can bless us. I, I, amen. Through a supernatural touch I, I, from heaven. I, I mean, you know, God can send an angel I, I, to Elijah. God can send an angel to touch Daniel. I, I, God can send an angel to quicken us. I, I've seen some of those folks, you know, I, I, that thought, well, man, I, I just don't know if I can move. I, I had an uncle one time I climbed up my mamma's steps. I, I, there was about 23. I, and he hugged I, and he puffed. I, and he said, I don't think I'd move if dynamite went off in my ear and a little black snake. I, I come out from one of the tracks. I, I, amen. And he flat footed that, that snake all the way down them steps. I, and he come alive. I, I, amen. I told him, I said, I didn't think you had it in you. I, I, he said, I didn't think I had it in me either. I, I, but when the 
need showed up, I, I, amen, God will equip us. I, I, we have more in us than we realize. Amen. We do. Amen. Just like the little Shunanite woman. I, amen. She said, you know, I owe a debt that I can't pay. I, and the man of God said, what do you have in your house? I, I, she said, well, I've got a little bit of oil. I, amen. And you know, that doesn't seem like much to the world. I, I, but you know what the man of God told her? She said, go borrow vessels and that not a few. In other words, don't time the hand of God. I, I, amen. Don't, you know, just have that expectation of a few and then say, now what? I, I, but she borrowed. I, I vessels and as long as she poured out I, I, there was something there I, enough to fill every vessel I, and not only fill the vessel but to sell the oil I, I pay the debt and live off the rest I, I, there was more in that oil than she realized I, and I've come to tell us tonight there's more in you I, I, there's more in this oil and more in this church than you realize tonight yes, amen because if God's in the arrangements, it's not going to go down. It's not going to do nothing, but it shall accomplish how whether and to that he sends it. I, amen, and I like that. I, I mean, I, I can almost picture her in my mind sometimes trying to look down in there. I, I, amen, wondering where's all that oil coming from. I, and I have seen folks, I, I come in the church and sit there, and I, I folks begin to coax them and pray for them and, I, I, you know, encourage them, and they get up and preach some of the best messages I, or run plumber around the church, get a blessing. I, I, amen. If the devil ever fought you and said, won't you just stay home tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Amen. And then you come and you think, Whoo, look what I'd have missed. That's yeah. right. Amen. If I wouldn't have showed up, I, I mean, that's like I was telling the brother last time we were here. I, I, we'd been having an online internet revival, and folks have been watching, and so we went live I, I, from this church. I, I, the last time I was here, and we had viewers from Pakistan, I, I, the Philippines, India, and various countries in Africa. I, I, from our little gathering here last time. I, I, amen. Who would have ever thought that could have been possible? I, how that we could be here, how, and they could see it there and be encouraged so you'll never know what God how, how might want to do with you or through you if you'll just submit yourself. How, how, that's why Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, how, how, by the mercies of God that you present your body, how, how living sacrifice, how, how holy and acceptable unto God, how, how which is your reasonable service. But it's not just Elijah. What about Jeremiah? Jeremiah sometimes is called the weeping prophet. I, and if you'll start in Jeremiah 1 and begin to read through, you'll find that sometimes his life is up. I, amen. And he's a preaching. I, and then other times he's a little down and discouraged. I, and by the time we get to chapter 20, he's saying things like, well, I, I, I'm not going to make mention of him anymore. I, I, but you know what? God sent strength to him through the word. I, and if God can do it for Jeremiah, he can do it for us. I, amen. We'll go to folks and we'll say, what do you think I want to do? I, I, amen. And we'll invest that time and that confidence in them. I, I, but friend, if we want to have confidence in anybody, I, it ought to be the Word of God. Amen. Because He's never failed us. Amen. The Bible said the Word of God is forever settled in heaven. And he said, where the word of God is, it's quick and it's powerful. Ha, ha, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Ha, ha, he said, where the word of a king is, there's power. Ha. And so this evening, I want to encourage us. Ha, ha, amen. The next time that you get weary in well-doing, ha, ha, instead of calling somebody up, expecting them to pick you up, they may be fighting their own battle. And as best as they might love you and want to pick you up, maybe they don't have the word. But find yourself a place to get along with God and begin to pray. He said in Jeremiah 33 and 3, Call unto me and I will 
answer thee and show thee great and mighty things uh, that thou knowest not. Uh, amen. There are so many people have contacted us in the last few weeks uh, and they say, I'm running on empty. I'm down to my last thread. Uh, I feel like I just can't go on. Uh, I will. Have you gotten the word? Well, no. Uh, uh, you know, so and so said it didn't look good. Well, who cares? Uh, uh, you know, respectfully, what they say, uh, they're not God. God is the one that has the final say in our life. And so just as he touched Daniel or amen, Jeremiah through the word of God, amen, God wants to touch us tonight, but we have to make that point of access. And uh, I've been writing a little study, amen, for another little book that we're doing. Amen. And you know, I I thought a lot about tests. You know why tests come. Amen. When you're in school, you hate tests. You know, pop quiz. uh Uh-oh. Amen. Have I studied enough? Do I know the material? But a test always has to come before there can be a promotion. And the same thing in our life. Amen. New level, new devils to fight. Amen. So tests come as a challenge to not only show us whether or not we know the material, but they come to prepare us for the promotion that lies in front of us. You can't go from first grade to second until you pass a certain test. You can't go from second to third until you pass a certain amount of tests. And likewise, in the spiritual realm, ha, amen, if you want to draw nigh unto God, amen, there's going to be some things that will try to oppose you. There are going to be some things that will try to drain the very life right out of you. Ha, ha, you can read in Luke chapter 10, Mary and Martha, you know, sisters, ha, ha, we find Martha, she gets kind of wrapped up in the service of Trying to get everything, you know, in order. I, I, we would say, you know, trying to get her ducks in a row. I, I, amen. And she goes to Jesus and she says, Lord, I, I, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her that she come and help me. And Jesus says unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Boy, have you ever been guilty of that? Trying to dot every I and cross every T and get everything done and neglecting the most important part. And she had to realize that Mary's important thing was the fact that she chose to hear the Word of God. And it's that Word of God that's going to make a difference. That's why David said, Thy word, O Lord, have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And I, I see folks, you know, in little country churches, I've been in all over. Amen. And I'm all for being excited. Amen. But everything that we do has to have a biblical model to follow. Otherwise, you're getting out there and left field. And I've seen them, amen, try to get them, you know, to get excited and march around and do all sorts of things. And amen, that uh, a lot of folks just didn't understand. We was in a service one time, and I don't say this to be disrespectful, but amen, they brought a little swimming pool in, and they poured oil in it, and they said, it's the pool of Bethesda. If you want to be healed, get in there. And so folks were getting in and they were falling, not because it was the power of God, but they couldn't stand up in the oil. <laughs> and so folks were, you know, kind of getting scared of that and running away from that. And I understand what the brother meant by saying that, you know, he wanted to do that. But we have to be careful that we get our encouragement the way God said. And that's to the Word. Amen. If it's not in the Word of God or backed by the Word of God, I don't want it. Because the Bible said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits and see whether or not they be of God. And, uh, you know, it it brings me, amen, over into the New Testament because uh, you say, well, you know, all those instances that you've mentioned have been Old Testament, but what about the Apostle Paul, amen, over in Corinthians where he said that we were even despairing of life. I mean, here's a man uh, uh, that has wrote a large part of the New Testament. Uh, Amen. Here's a man that God has used greatly, but he got a little bit discouraged at that point. And sometimes if we're not careful, we'll allow ourselves to get too low. We have to make sure that we have an inflow as there is also an outflow. Amen. My pastor always said, as much as you preach to others, you've got to make sure you spend plenty of time in the prayer closet. To let God feel you so you'll have something to give out. Amen. And so Paul 
found encouragement by God. God never abandoned him. God won't abandon us either. But there's some folks, they bad they accuse God unjustly. I met a 32-year-old young man the other day, and he was having some very serious health issues, and he said, why is God doing this? I said, first off, you've got to get the adversary down because it's not God. God's not the author of confusion. No, it's not. God wants to help you to be able to stand. Amen. Amen. I said, this is the devil that's come to lie, to kill, to steal, to destroy. And so I said, you need to understand who the real enemy is. God wants to strengthen you. God wants to give you the grace to get through this. Because he said in Romans 5 and 20, and amen, I, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to close here in a few minutes. Amen, not preach very long. Ha! Amen, but God just really began to deal with me about the fact God wants to put strength in us. Whether it be through prayer, through the word, or through an angelic touch. Amen. I'm glad that God has put something in us. And there was a little Muslim girl here the other day. She wrote and contacted me and said, I I've got some questions. She said, what is this Holy Ghost and fire that I read about in the Bible? And uh, we began to try to explain theologically, but the religion is so different. She wasn't following me. And I, I, I asked her, I said, have you ever been blessed to, you know, to have soda pop? You know, a lot of folks call it, you know, pop or some say soda. And she said, yes. And I said, when you look at it in the bottle, it doesn't look like much, does it? She said, no, it don't. I said, but has a kid ever shook that bottle up and what happened? She said, it begins to come alive. I said, that's kind of like God's spirit. I said, you may look at myself or yourself and think, well, there's not much there, but when God's inside of you and the world begins to shake you, you begin to come alive even more. God wants to put that kind of strength in you. She said, well, you know, what kind of fire, though, is this? Is it, is it like where they put the coals down and they walk over the fire? I said, no, ma'am, it's better than that. Amen. God has something that he wants to put inside of us. He said in John 7 and 38, He that believeth on me, ha, ha, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Ha. Amen. God wants to have that fire in you to when you feel like you can't go on. Ha. How that fire is causing you to get up. Amen. Amen. I, I told him one time I felt like there was ping pong going on. You know, in my heart, you know, you, you kind of think, well, I'm going to sit down. Or a lot of times preachers say, I'm closing five times. Hey, Amen. Well, give me five more minutes. And, you know, my pastor would say, how many? Give me five more minutes. And he'd go five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Hey, Amen. In other words, I've got plenty of time. I, I, but, you know, God wants us to realize that our strength is in Him. Yes. Yes. Not in ourselves. That's right. Amen. Because Paul said... You know, I, I had a thorn in the flesh. And I besought the Lord thrice that it might be taken away. And he never got the answer that he wanted. I'm sure he probably thought, man, I'd love to hear God say, all right, it's gone. But you know what God told him? He said, my grace is sufficient. And his strength is made perfect in our weakness. So the weaker we are, amen, the stronger he can be in our life because we quit trying to stand on our own and start leaning on him. Kind of like Ezekiel, amen, in that water. It wasn't just ankle deep, knee deep, amen, or waist deep. It become a river to swim in. And when you're in ankle deep, you're still standing partially on your own. But when you're in waters to swim in, it's no longer you standing, but it's the water holding you up. And friend, that's the kind of strength that God wants to give you tonight to where it's no longer you, but it's him that's holding you up. Acts 17, 28 said that it's in him that we live we move and we have our being. And yet there are people today, they think, well, I'm a strong person. Amen. I, I've met young preachers that were so full of zeal. I, I mean, they were just going to run out and fix everybody and straighten everybody out. You ever know anybody like that? Amen. And then they run into that first opposition and they wonder, what happened? It's not our strength. Amen, because when we take the strength of God for granted, then we become like Samson and we shake ourselves expecting it to be there. And it's not there. Amen, because of disobedience sometimes. But I'm glad that as they chained old Samson up, as I close, amen, you know what happened? He said, Lord, hear me and remember me just this one time. In other words, God, you forgive me. 
And his hair had grown back and God gave him a greater victory at the end than he had ever had at the beginning. And I believe that's what's coming for you and I. Amen. I believe the best is yet to come when he comes for us, his church. For the Bible said, amen, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And I believe that because it's the word of God. So I'm looking forward to better things. Amen. As he comes. Great and terrible day of the Lord. Great for those that are ready. Not so good for those that are not. So tonight, amen, instead of letting the enemy discourage you, amen, why not let's come around this evening for just a moment and let's pray and let's ask God, God, you strengthen us. God, you help us. God, anoint us to do the work, to carry this out into our families and our homes and our community and our neighbors. Amen. God, let it begin. Instead of waiting on somebody else to come along, God, let it begin in me. And uh, my daughter was so excited the other day. She had went somewhere and was gone. And she said, uh, you know, I went down for breakfast and I looked over and I saw somebody crying. And she said, I got to go over and I got to witness and got to share the, you know, the testimony and the word of God with them. And I said, who would I ever thought that it would have been an opportunity at a breakfast meeting? But God opened the door that no man could shut. Amen. And so I believe tonight God wants to put strength in us. Yeah. So let's all that will come around and let's have a word of prayer tonight before we dismiss and amen, ask God to move and move for the church. Maybe you want to pray right where you're at, but I'm going to kneel down right here. Heavenly Father, Lord, most righteous God, I thank you, Lord, for your mercy, your grace. And God, I ask you, Lord, would you reach down tonight, God, and touch each and every heart and home that is represented in this church and God I pray that you would open doors for this church that no man can shut God and I pray would you strengthen them God put strength in them or to rise up and to keep going on God I know there are many people all over our community and our world tonight that are tired they're weary and well doing but God I believe that you can renew the strength of your people God and Lord you kept amen not only uh uh, Gideon, amen, and not only Joshua, amen, and Caleb and others throughout the Old Testament and the New, but God, I believe that you're still in the keeping business and you're able to keep that which we commit unto you. And God, I pray tonight, Lord, would you bless this little church, God, would you let them grow, amen, according to your plan and according to your will to reach out. And God, I pray, may they take, amen, what they hear in here and be able to carry it back with them and use it and share it. Lord, to those around them, to encourage them, amen, to keep going, I pray in Jesus' name. And God, I thank you for it right now. Amen. Amen. All right, anybody? Need